I have seen this question asked about a thousand times. Is this a bad snail? There are tons of different freshwater snails out there, but I'm going to focus on the three top bad guys for this one. I'm going to talk about the ram's horn snail, the Malaysian trumpet snail, and the bladder snail. But first, if you enjoy learning about the aquarium hobby, then you've come to the right place. I upload a new video every Sunday, so if you don't want to miss out on future videos, please subscribe and turn on the notifications. I had a little poll on my Instagram page to see what people thought about snails and which ones they think are the worst. And not surprisingly, people said that the ram's horn snail and the bladder snail were the worst of the worst. Hold that thought because there's a reason they think that. Whether you deliberately added snails to your tank or they accidentally hitched a ride on some plants, it's important to know that every living thing has a bio load. And the snails are no different, even though they're so small, if you have a hundred of them, they're going to impact your tank's water parameters and they're going to have an effect on your ammonia level. If you suddenly have an explosion of snails in your tank, then your water quality is definitely going to suffer. If you want to keep these snails as a cleanup crew, it's important to know how easy it is to run into problems, especially if you have a small tank. These adorable little snails have a lifespan of about two years and an adult size of roughly five centimeters. They are omnivores, which means they'll eat pretty much everything they can get a hold of, except for live plants. These snails will only feast on dead or decaying plant matter. So far, so good, but here's where the problem comes in. These snails are hermaphrodites which means each snail has both male and female sexual organs. And if that's not scary enough, if there's only one snail in your aquarium, they are able to internally fertilize themselves. So even if you have only one snail in your tank, you could end up with a hundred within a short period of time. Each snail can lay between 10 and 40 eggs at a time, and these eggs take only a week to hatch. The problem with these snails is that they are super adaptable and don't need much to flourish in your aquarium. And if there is plenty of food around, their numbers will explode. Interestingly, you'll find that a lot of shrimp breeders keep ram's horn snails in their shrimp tanks. That is because ram's horn excrements are quite beneficial to shrimp and offers them a lot of nutrition. These shrimp breeders generally don't struggle with snails because they don't overfeed their shrimp. If there isn't an abundance of food available, your snail population will stay relatively small. I have one or two ram's horns in some of my shrimp tanks and their numbers really don't get out of hand. But I can't say the same for my trumpet snails though. Just like with ram's horns, Malaysian trumpet snails live around two years. They don't get as big as ram's horns and generally max out at around 2.5 centimeters. They are also omnivores, but what makes these snails appealing to hobbyists is that they spend the majority of their lives underground. These snails eat waste matter and detritus that has fallen in between the tank's gravel. And in doing so, they aerate the soil which is beneficial to your aquarium. These snails aren't hermaphrodites, but they still don't need a male and a female snail in order to breed. Females are able to clone themselves if they aren't able to find a mate. This means that a single female can multiply to produce a whole colony of snails. These snails also don't lay eggs, but rather give birth to live, miniature versions of themselves. Shockingly, these snails can give birth to as many as 70 young at a time. The reason why I suspect most people don't consider them as the worst pest snail is because more often than not, people aren't even aware that they have large numbers of trumpet snails in their tanks. These snails are mostly active at night when the tank lights are off. It actually looks really cool. If you wanna do yourself a favor, then go to your tank late at night and switch the light on after you've put some food in the tank and you'll see it looks like little zombies coming up out of the ground because they, your, your ground will start to move and they'll just pop up everywhere. It's very fun to watch, but y'all, I do have too many of them. Bladder snails are almost always introduced to an aquarium accidentally via a new plant. They max out at around one centimeter and can live around two years. 
What makes these little snails unique is that their shell spirals to the left. They are omnivores with a main diet of algae, but they will readily eat fish food and waste as well. Because they are so small, most people aren't even aware that they have snails in their tank until it's too late. Just like with ramzorns, these snails are hermaphrodites and will quickly explode in numbers if the environment is favorable. Apart from being unsightly, loss of snails all over your tank poses another problem. Even though these snails are relatively small, a large number of them will definitely have an impact on your tank's ammonia levels. Large numbers of these snails will have the same impact on your tank's bio load as adding more fish to your tank. Whatever you do, try to stay away from poison. Not only will this cause a huge die-off in your tank, but it also poses a threat to your other inhabitants. Uh, your sensitive fish and even your shrimp might die from this and also a large die-off will cause an ammonia spike in your tank. There are two ways I have found that can safely remove snails from your tank. The first is to manually catch them. Uh, you take a slice of vegetable, I use cucumber, um, you put it in the tank with the lights off, you leave it for a few hours and then you go back and you remove the snails manually by just taking out the, the piece of vegetable that you have in your tank. The other way is to add assassin snails to your tank. Assassin snails eat other snails. So it is very convenient because you do not have to do anything. You can literally just put them in the tank and then after a few months, they will most likely have sorted out your problem. And then you can just take them back to the pet shop or you can keep them and feed them fish flakes because they eat fish flakes too. But after this, you need to make sure that you never have this problem again. And the reason why you most likely had this problem is because of overfeeding. So you will need to drastically cut down on your feeding and you will have to put measures in place. Like if you have a shrimp only tank, then you can get a feeding floater, which makes sure that there's no food lying on the bottom of the tank. So it's very hard for snails to get to the food. So whether people find these snails helpful cleaners for their tank or absolutely hate them, it depends on who you ask. But the thing is, there is no such thing as a bad snail. There is such a thing as a favorable environment that causes problems. If you are new to the hobby or you have just recently set up your tank, I would recommend that you steer clear of any snails. The thing is, new hobbyists tend to overfeed their fish and I don't blame you, they always look hungry, they're always begging for food. It's very, very easy to overfeed them. But if you do not yet know what you're doing and how often you need to be feeding your fish, then you will overfeed. And if you have snails in your tank, that is the perfect environment for them to explode in numbers. I made a video about the perfect algae eaters for your tank. So if you've got these snails to eradicate algae in your tank, I would recommend that you rather go watch that video and choose one of the animals or multiple animals on that list if your tank is big enough for them. If you want to eradicate your algae problem, it doesn't help just chucking in an animal to eat your algae. You need to actually fix the problem. Either your light is on for too long every day, your tank gets direct sunlight, you do not do weekly water changes, um, or you put too much fertilizer in your tank. There's so many things that can cause algae in your tank. So you need to fix the problem instead of just putting animals in that will fix it for you temporarily. If you are still unsure about whether you should get a snail for your tank, then I would say don't, but you are welcome to leave a comment and then we can talk about it. I would also really appreciate if you could subscribe to my channel and like this video so I know to make videos like this again in the future. Until next time, bye.